All right, welcome back again. In this video, I just want to talk a little bit about stoichiometry. And I'll give you some, again, just the basics of it. And I can do that probably best with an example. I've got a real simple one to show you. So let me go over to the document camera and, and tell you what I mean. Okay, so please forgive my drawing. It's not an art class. But I've got a really simple equation that everybody can probably relate to. And this is just telling us that if I take two wheels, plus one frame, I can make one bicycle. Okay, and again, we're, we're not even going to do really any chemistry. I'm just going to give you a bunch of examples that will tie in directly with, with uh, the chemistry you're going to do eventually. So let's start with something basic then. With this, So this is, essentially this is an equation, right? It just, I've, I've written it out in equation form. Two wheels plus one frame makes one bike. That's fine. So if I have, for example, so let's say I have ten wheels, how many frames can I, how many frames would I need in order to, to use up all my wheels and make bikes? Well, simple enough, and a lot of you can probably just do this in your head, at least I hope you can, but let's do it mathematically to really, to, to emphasize this point. So, if I have those 10 wheels, I need some kind of conversion factor to tell me how many frames it would take. So what I can do is exactly that. I want to get rid of wheels, and get this in terms of frames, and from this equation, which by the way is balanced, it takes two wheels, two wheels to make, two wheels, excuse me, plus one frame to make one bike. So I can just look at the ratios here and I see for every two wheels I require one frame. So I've really been able to get this conversion factor from my balanced equation. Okay, so if I do this math, I can do this in my head, wheels cancel out and I'm left with five frames that would be required. Okay, that's great. I could take it a step further and say, well fine, if I have those five frames, how many bikes could I actually make? Again, I'm sure you're doing this in your head, but let's write it out explicitly. I want to get rid of frames and get in terms of bicycles and go back to the balanced equation. We'll keep coming back to this. For every one frame, I get one bike. So I have that. This will cancel. And I find that I can get five bicycles. Okay, so pretty simple. And again, this is something you could have just glanced at and probably done in your head, but I wanted to show it this way. This will become more important as we go. Let's do another example, a little bit less simple. Say I have 16 wheels this time and 14 frames. I want to know, using that, those materials, how many bicycles can I make? Okay, well, let's, let's pick one to start with. It doesn't really matter which one. Let's pick the 16 wheels. There we go. And I'm going to go, again, keep returning to this equation, but I'm going to get rid of wheels and get in terms of bicycles because I want to know how many I could make if I used up all 16 of these wheels. Well, it tells me for every two wheels I can make one bicycle. Great. That's fine. So this cancels out and I could potentially make eight bikes. Okay, fine. Let's then look at the 14 frames. 14 frames times, well, okay, I'm going to get rid of frames. So that goes on the bottom. I want to again get in terms of bicycles. Up here you see it's one to one, so that's what I put in. Great. So again, if I do this little bit of math here, 14 times 1 over 1 is just 14. So I could make 14 bicycles if I used up all the frames. So this, this brings up something that's going to come again and again in chemistry, and that's that what if you have extra? Okay, I, I had, it turns out I have more frames than I need, right? So really the way to say this is that the wheels are what's limiting how many bikes I can make. Okay, I'm not limited by the number of frames. As a matter of fact, I have extra. But I'm limited by the number of wheels. So if we were doing chemistry, we would refer to the wheels as the limiting reactant. So LR, but it stands for limiting reactant. Limiting reagent, same thing. Okay. So if we continue this, go here a little bit, remember the equation, but I could say fine. So I better, if I'm going to calculate how much I can really do, I better use the wheels. So how many frames am I actually going to need? Well, I have 16 wheels times, again, let's convert to get into frames. So I want to get into frames, get rid of wheels. So once again, I keep returning to this. I want, I, it's two to one. For every two of these, it's going to take one of those. Fine. And if you do this, I find that I have eight frames that would be required. Okay, fine. We can take it a step further and say, well, fine, then how many... How many um, frames am I going to have left over? Well, we started with 14. So I had 14 frames initially. 
right, minus the eight frames that are required. In other words, these are the ones that are going to get used up when I make bicycles. And what am I left with? Well, I have six frames left. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And once again, I, I want to emphasize that I know these are things you could probably do in your head, but it's important to think about the math because when we get to real chemistry examples, you won't be able to do it in your head necessarily. One other thing that's really important to point out, what if, for example, I told you that we had 40 pounds of frames and 40 pounds of wheels? Okay, hopefully you realize at this point these numbers aren't very good and we need more information. Okay, so a really critical point to be made here is that it doesn't really do us any good unless we convert these into a number of frames and a number of wheels. This just tells me how much all the frames weigh, but I don't know how many that is. So the piece of information I would really need is how many pounds per frame. I need some kind of conversion factor. But now let's say, for example, I knew that each frame, and if, you know, forgive me, I'm not a big bicycle person, so I'm going to guess at these, but let's say, for example, I knew that it was 20 pounds per one frame. So every frame weighed 20 pounds. And I knew that every wheel weighed 5 pounds. Okay, so I have this conversion going from a number to a mass back and forth. So if I knew this, well now we're in business. So I could convert by making that multiplication. I end up with two frames. So it turns out 40 pounds of frames was actually two frames. And 40 pounds of wheels, and this mass cancels out, and I get in terms of a number of wheels, which is what I wanted. And this gives me eight wheels. And right away by inspection you could say, oh, I get it. Now I realize I could make two bikes and I'd have some wheels left over. Okay, so that's really all you're going to have to do. And if this seems simple to you, that's great because the chemistry is basically the same thing, just with different numbers. And we'll, we'll have some different amounts and different ways we count things, but this is the exact principle. So hopefully that'll be a good start.